while the steering box is opened up like this, we were just changing the seal, it's a really good opportunity to talk about how the series Land Rover steering works and, and, and how the power steering that we install assists this. But it also shows some of the features, I guess, but also some of the limitations uh, around this steering system and why, for example, we can't actually increase the turning circle on these. Um, it's not about steering stops, it's just purely the mechanics of, the, of this box itself. So you can see the main pivot point here, it's kind of like a spanner head as it rotates from this point up and down the shaft as this screw gear moves or twists around left and right. So if I twist the shaft, you'll see it moving up and down. And that delimitation of the steering assembly is that once I reach the end here, that's it. And obviously this is held in place on, a, on the face of this panel here is a, a little bearing race and the bearing slides up and down and so it stops it from twisting up this way. But basically you have that much movement and that's it. This is the return to sender steering dampener we put on the cars. And a steering dampener is really just a shock absorber for the, for the steering system. The return to sender element that is a bit unusual is this spring. So you turn to the left, it compresses, you turn to the right, it expands. And of course it wants to then pull itself back into a neutral or straight ahead position. This is a, this, a, a steering dampener like this, a return to center one, has been used sometimes to mask steering issues, vibrations, misalignments, other, other issues within the steering system. But when used correctly, it's really nice. And particularly on a vehicle like this, which traditionally had a very active return to center in that you needed to turn the wheel. What you'll notice is that when we talk about power steering, we're not talking about a full replacement of a hydraulic system from say an early Range Rover or a Discovery One that then modifies the steering and has that steering box, um, the power steering unit down the front of the chassis. We are amplifying and assisting the original steering mechanism and that's by putting an electric motor driving the, the steering shaft on the other side of the firewall. This is the main power steering unit and these are actually made up of um, I guess from fairly generic parts. I think it's a GM part underneath potentially and you can actually get this from a few different suppliers if you're just wanting the the base motor and, and sensor housing uh, and then you can do what you want with the shaft and you can you can put something together pretty pretty cheaply. Um, we work with uh, these guys easy EZ, easy power steering in, uh, in the Netherlands. And the reason we do that is because they make Land Rover specific stuff and they've done a lot of work to get all this housing and everything sort of period correct and, and fitting in. There's a whole lot of bracketry that they do. They also make all these couplings. So we're able to modify the steering shaft to have this keyway that slides in here. And that's how we connect that to the original steering box. This also, uh, what this does is gives us some collapsibility. Uh, and what you know, old cars didn't have and new cars do have is an area in the steering column where it collapses if there's an accident. The geometry of a Land Rover steering assembly isn't so bad and actually in an in a impact it, it kind of swings away and there's a few rotational elements and it's, it's not like a skewer like some old cars were. But this just gives us this extra protection because we know that we've got about uh, I think overall it's about 80 millimetres of collapsibleness within the column. Um, so it's just a little bit more protection for you as well as you know giving you all the good, good power steering stuff. This is essentially assisting the rotation of the steering column. The good thing about that is it doesn't actually, if it fails, it doesn't actually provide any resistance. And you can see that I can turn this without the, the steering column, uh, with the steering wheel, sorry, in, in place. So in complete failure, you still have normal Land Rover steering. But when it's working, and it really is incredibly reliable, it's designed to be in a you know, OEM vehicle, when it's working, it is awesome. It's not a change to the steering, it just makes it easier. You can see it fits in quite a compact way behind this when we're covering the dash panels anyway to fit our speaker system. We can enclose all of this area and we put a few other electronics behind there as well. Frida. I'll be done in a sec. Originally a Land Rover steering system and, and this particular system really introduced in like 58 with the introduction of the Series 2, there was no steering dampener and the, the relay here 
provided a little bit of dampening. And the steering wasn't that hard to use because you weren't forcing and, and steering through and into a dampener or a shock absorber, which has its own resistance. But then, you know, people started requesting it. And so later on, Series 2s and then Series 3s all came with a steering dampener. So no spring, but the, the shock absorber system. That made the steering harder again. So that notoriously heavy, low-speed steering is partly to do with having the steering dampener in place. Of course, adding the spring and the return to center element makes that even harder. So if we don't have the power steering enabled, this is the heaviest steering uh, that you've ever experienced. But with it, it allows it to feel not like a modern car, but still like a, you know, a solid axle leaf sprung vehicle, but it steers in a predictable way. It tracks true, it tracks straight ahead and it, and it naturally eases the car back to a, a straight ahead position after you've turned a corner. So it's, it's, it's less of a learning curve and it's less almost mental overhead, constantly thinking about keeping the car pointing straight ahead. Now, a, a perfectly set up steering system can do that anyway, but this this helps uh, enormously in creating a feel that is that is more usual and more uh, fits into people's, you know, sort of steering habits and, and idea of how a steering system should work. The real question is how well does it work? And one of the main reasons you want power steering is for that low speed maneuvering. When you're at highway speeds, it's not a big deal, but lower speeds is where you need to put in all that muscle work. So here's the car off, so no power steering on. And you know, I can just sort of, can maybe, ah, uh, that's play in the steering, but can I move the wheel? Uh, mm, not really, like one-handed. If I turn the car on. So now we've got power steering on and it's literally a one-handed operation to turn the wheel. It's hard to see, but I can literally turn the wheels. And I'm, you know, spinning mud tires on concrete here. So yeah, it works. We've got an adjustable dial for the rate and the amount of uh, assistance, electric assistance. Too much and it feels really floaty, uh, too little and you know, it's not that helpful. What we're, that's helpful for us to test it and, and find the rate that we want. We're actually able now to take a, uh, you know, we've got a, a digital pulse to, to give a speed and we can use that information to have it adjustable based on speed like a, a modern electric system would do. So less at higher speed so it doesn't feel too floaty and dangerous on the freeway.